Welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about microphones today. Um, we do have another video uh, that specifically talks about um, microphone technology and how it works um, and goes into a little bit more depth in terms of polar patterns. Um, but I think we need to do a tiny little polar pattern refresher um, just so you guys understand the implications as we go through these mics. So basically what a polar pattern is, is it's the pattern of pickup that um, a microphone covers. So I'm gonna draw one right here. So this is gonna be our microphone. And there's its handle. And we're gonna say this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern. So I'm gonna draw the polar pattern. Now spin this around in your mind in 3D space and what we're saying is that its best pickup is here, 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 even here, but not here. See how it goes in? So if we draw a circle around it, this area here is less pickup. So there's actually a loss in decibels. And if you look at the manufacturer's charts, you can figure out how much that is. Um, over a specific um, area, you might be losing, there you might be losing, you know, seven dB. Sorry, that's Siri. Um, this is me another mic. This is the handle. And this one, I'm gonna draw a super cardioid. So it has a normal cardioid pattern and has a little bubble behind it. Now what that means is that there's pickup behind the mic plus out front. Now how does this impact us? Well, it impacts us greatly in the world of stage audio because we need to decide where a foldback wedge goes. Now on a cardioid microphone, we'd often just put one foldback wedge directly behind the microphone, pointing back up to the artist so they can hear themselves. But in this case, if we did that, the microphone would be picking up the speaker and it would be more likely to induce a feedback loop. So how would we handle that? Well, the best place to put the wedge in this case would be put two of them either side of that rear pickup that makes it a supercardioid or hypercardioid. Okay, so do one more. There's an easy one. This can be a whatever microphone, and this is gonna be an Omni pickup. Now, Omni is just a circle. It picks up the same uh, amount of levels or SPL in every direction. What does that mean? Would you use it on a live stage with foldback? Absolutely not. So you very rarely see Omnis in the live um, world except for when they're recording things um, and not for sound reinforcement. All right, so we've covered our uh, polar pattern catch up. Now we're gonna look at some mics. Now this mic you'll see in every club, pub, concert venue in Australia. This is a trusted Shure SM58. It is a dynamic, um, so it, it, it functions without an external power su source. Um, and it is a cardioid microphone. It's specifically designed for vocals. It has great uh, rejection um, behind it. So this, this way coming from the handle. Yeah. Now this is designed for vocals. This is the instrument version. So this is a Shure SM57. And if you look closely, um, you should be able to see the cardioid um, diagram on the actual mic. Um, instead of having a round grill, it has a squared off grill so that you can get the mic a lot closer to the sound source. Um, it is still a, a cardioid. Next, uh, this is moving up a little bit. This is like the professional, uh, say concert version of a SM58. The differences are um, there's a little bit more high frequency in the microphone and it does have rear pickup. So this is what I was saying before, if I was to use this mic on a stage, I'd fold back with two wedges. Um, it is a vastly improved version of an SM58. Uh, it's, yeah, there's no comparison. Um, there is, a version of this for instruments, it is called a Beta 57, Beta 57A. Um, look it up, I don't have one with me today. Now, every uh, company who produces anything has a competitor. Shure's competitor, uh, for the most part, is Sennheiser. This is Sennheiser's version of a Beta 58. This is a vocal, um, dynamic, super cardioid microphone. They actually sound very similar. Um, down into the cheaper series, 
uh, uh, very similar to 945. This is 835. Um, it's not as tough. Um, there's not quite as much clarity in the, in the high frequencies. So we're going to look at an instrument mic now. Um, specifically, this is designed for guitar cabs. This is a Sennheiser E906. Um, people always ask which way they go. It's really simple. Companies like their logo on camera. This is the logo side, face that towards the audience. This side that says front, point that towards the sound you're trying to pick up. Now, the 906 has a poor cousin called a 609. They sound very, very similar. This one's a, a little bit tougher. Okay, I think we're gonna look at some drum mics now. Now this is uh, interesting, this is a half cardioid and it is a condenser mic, so it requires a power source. Our power source uh, is Phantom, so we enable that on the console, um, usually by the channel, so we whatever channel we plug it into, we're gonna turn Phantom on. This will now work. This picks up everything like a cardioid, except nothing beyond the plate. So where does this go? It goes inside a kick drum, and it gets pushed all the way on a pillow to the closest we can get it to the drummer's foot. Um, and it's really good at picking up that high SPL uh, slap sound of a kick drum. Do we use it alone? Well, you could. It's got quite a lot of low frequency, but I like to use it in a pair alongside something like this. So this is a dynamic, purpose-built kick drum mic called a Sennheiser E902. To tell you the truth, I personally prefer Shure's version, which is a Beta 52. Uh, I just don't have one with me today. Um, they're very similar mic. They're a really woofy, low frequency um, sort of mic. So um, this is actually quite unusual. This is a 903, E903, and this is a purpose-built snare mic. Um, really nice sounding, um, but not dissimilar to a Beta 57. So you could use either, and you'd get a very similar sound. They're great at high SPL sources. So if something's really loud acoustically, this is a good fit. Um, so I only ever really use this on snare occasionally on toms, uh, and I've had uh, some luck using these on, on brass sections and horns, um, trumpets, saxophones, um, that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna look at a couple more purpose-built drum mics. Um, this is a Sennheiser uh, E904. This can be used on snare or on toms. Um, I prefer to use the B57 on snare and use this on my on my floor tom. Um, this has a, a poor cousin, which is a E604. They sound pretty similar. Um, this one's got a plastic housing. They don't last as long in this Darwin climate. Um, I suggest if you live up here with us, uh, buy the buy the 904 for sure. Um, and they're fine for snare and toms. Um, I've been using them lately on some horns as well uh, by clipping them to music stands. Um, okay, so as far as drums go, we're left with hi-hat and overheads. I'm going to show you a bunch of mics. So this is a Sennheiser E614, small diaphragm condenser mic. Uh, it's a cardioid shape and it requires Phantom to run. It's a condenser. I would use a pair of these as my drum overheads and sometimes a third one on my hi-hat. Why on the hi-hat? Because with the hi-hat, uh, it's a really high frequency source and it requires clarity in the high frequencies. Uh, no better mic than a, a condenser to do that. Um, I try and avoid large diaphragm condensers on the live stage, uh, so we use the small guy ones such as this. This is a Audio-Technica 4051. Uh, small diaphragm condenser in cardioid pattern. They're very very similar. I believe uh, the 4051 is a little bit better in terms of sensitivity. So if I was going to mic up a choir or something ambient, I'd lean towards this and I'd keep the Sennheiser on the drums. Uh, Shure builds a, a really, really nice uh, small diaphragm condenser. It's really popular called a SM81. I don't have one with me, but I do have its poor cousin, the PG81. So again, common use, choir mics, drum overheads, uh, hi-hat. Um, and that'll be it for rock and roll mics.